facts and opinions expressed in the following show are solely those of the hosts and their guests and not those of W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our web. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to W4CY Radio or its employees or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing W4CY Radio. Welcome to Outdoors People, with me, C.W. Getz, and her, Maya Marzaki. Good evening. It's Wednesday, April 26, 2023. We have a 56 degree Fahrenheit sunny day here in uh, North Central Illinois. And I tell you, it's that is 13 degrees, kids, Celsius. So anywhere other than the United States, that's your temperature or that's our temperature. Um, and I actually uh, to tell you, uh, Maya, my lovely co-host, is a little bit under the weather this evening. So I will be flying this. Uh, well, let's just say I'll be driving this ship solo so let's uh let's see if i can't uh make a train wreck out of myself hey juan what is your temperature down there yeah we're all the rich people rich wealthy people or rich wealthy same thing people live in uh florida there and what is it west palm beach right <laughs> that's correct yeah i'm here in west palm beach south florida yeah. and our weather today is 86 degrees oh, fahrenheit nice and sunny and you're getting a tan i'm sure i love that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm working from the beach today so are, are you really are you out there in one of those little canopies over there <laughs> that's right <laughs> you're saying that while you're selling seashells or something like that right or maybe drinks. Sure, yeah selling drink. yeah, right. <laughs> you know i speaking of being under the way i'm telling you i have been hot all day i think i'm going through menopause or something like that because it's been all day so yeah sweating profusely um let's hope i can keep that under control too <laughs> so <laughs> Well, tonight's episode of Outdoors People is brought to you by, by the way, I'm going to mention this. I am going to read an introduction that has been, it's probably the toughest introduction I've ever read on the air. And before the show, I was going through it with my guest and I, I will probably butcher some names. So people expect that. Uh, I'm, the, I'm from the farm. I'm just, you know, that's all I can say. Well, tonight's episode of Outdoors People is brought to you by Rutabaga Paddle Sports, providing time on the water. By Campground Views, making camping easier. By Duluth Pack, made in the USA since 1882. And by Jackson Kayak, pursuing joy through pedal sports. Tonight's episode is mountaineering in Bosnia with our special guest, Ada Starcevic. Bosnian hiker, ski tourist, high altitude mountaineer, rock climber, and alpinist, Ada Starcevic comes from Bogoinjo, a small, small town near the capital city of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Sarajevo. In addition to mountains in the surrounding area and on the Balkan Peninsula, Ada has climbed the highest peaks in Europe and South America. In addition to high altitude ascents of Mont Blanc, France, Elbrus, Russia, Pisco, Peru, and Acagua, Argentina, she has completed various climbs or alpinist climbs in Bosnia and Herzegovina, as well as the Alps. In 2014, Ada was named Bosnia and Herzegovina's most successful female alpinist by the Sarajevo School of Mountaine Mountaineering, uh, becoming the first woman in history of alpinism there to climb the Palavacini, uh, which is an alpine route on Gross Glockner in the Alps. And again in 2020 by the Mountaineering Association of Bosnia and Herzegovina, for her ascent of Akokagua, Akogagua, I think that's right. <laughs> Coincidentally, settling, uh, setting the female altitude record there. In addition to alpine climbs in Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia, and Europe, sports climbing is another one of Ada's passions. Having climbed hundreds of sports routes of various difficulties, one of her most notable achievements is the longest sports route in Croatia, a 600 meter, and that is a uh 1968 feet rock climb and with that welcome to the show ada 
Thank you. Good evening, all outdoor people. So the people in America and Bosnia and abroad. <laughs> I really like your pronunciation. <laughs> hey, man, I butchered a couple of those. And I think it's Akogagwa or Akogagwa. Akogagwa, Akogagwa, yeah, yeah. I, think I butchered yeah. it. And, and I read like a third grader, so I apologize for that. <laughs> I did my best. I did my okay. best. How are you yeah. doing this evening? Pretty good. Uh, as um, I can mention that it is the midnight right now and this moment it is 12 degrees in Bosnia, but it's okay. It's okay. I could manage. Wow. Yeah. As soon, as, as soon as we finish this interview, I'll go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you won't be drinking any coffee that I'm taking. Yeah. yeah. Um, I drink yeah. all of the coffees. Well, thank you for uh, staying up with us to be on the air. We really, really appreciate that. By the way, what is your weather there in Bosnia? Oh, it's pretty raining right now. Uh, we are seeking for the sun, but we hope that we will find it in a few days. But it's still raining. Yeah. What did you say it was like before the show? You told me it was like 12 degrees. Was it 12, 12 degrees? degrees. So, yeah, Celsius degrees. Yeah, around 10 or 12 Celsius degrees. Yeah. yeah we, so as I said, we are waiting for the sun. <laughs> well, that looks like it's about 52 degrees here, something like that, 50, maybe 54, 52. That's not too bad. That's that's about the weather we're having here. So mm -hmm. about the same, yeah. very similar. Yeah. Well, very good. Well, listen, I, first thing I'm going to ask you is how did you get started mountaineering? How did all that begin? I somehow gradually discover hiking in my adventure. I start uh, at the beginning. I start with a with an easy walk, and eventually it turned out at sleeping on a rock at six hundred meters or sleeping in a tent at six thousand meters, which is, uh, I think, twenty thousand feet. Oh. Uh, sleeping sleeping in a tent, yeah. Uh, as I can say, I, I I gradually push my limits, and whenever uh, depending on how I was feeling at that moment um, i done some some things so um after 15 years uh, pushing my limits uh, here i am uh, <laughs> in the mountain as i can say uh, I, I i i'm i want to be in a mountain more than ever and uh, spend some time and looking for the new adventure maybe the sentence what would people say here in bosnia and herzegovina is you can do it that's only for men that it, it, you're not made for that and maybe that that's what pushed me <laughs> to go uh, every step further uh, be, because of the motivation i wanted to to have at that moment but i didn't and of course um, what is unique with the mountaineering is that when you are in the mountain, you are alone with the, with the mountain. You are uh, you, you can depend only on yourself, um, on your abilities, uh, and and uh, it it uh, actually awakens uh, that existential fear, uh, which which can lead you to the basic principle of life. So it means you you if you don't know, you can survive. So may, maybe that yeah. That's I think uh, I can say, you know, yeah. I have to tell you, God, I wish Maya were here because she would love exactly everything you just said. I She's saw, yes, I saw some pictures uh, and some videos of her and I saw that she she knows uh, she, she actually do the rock climbing and uh, she's in the mountains. But uh, who knows? Maybe next time. Maybe she will come to Bosnia. <laughs> yeah, and you know, yeah. I'm just thinking about that. We are we're talking about doing a European tour at some point with this show, and yeah, uh, that, we would, that love would be great because we have really uh, good climbing spots. We will talk about it later, if you like. Of course, that would be great. I, so, as, I wanted, uh, as I wanted to say, uh, how I started, uh, I, I, as I said, I started with an easy uh, climb, with easy, easy walk, and then I start hiking, then mountaineering, uh, then I start start doing the rock climbing, then ski touring, and then it all ended up with alpinism. So if you combine some of these activities, it's really nice. It's really a pleasure uh, yeah. to, to know those, some of these things in, in the mountains. You know, so that it really involves a lot of equipment. I mean, you're you're doing skiing, you're doing climbing, and and all that. That re would require quite a bit of equipment to uh, take with you mountaineering. Is that right? Uh, uh, according uh, to the to the trip we take, uh, there are different types of trips. Uh, there are some winter and summer summer trips, and during the winter we have to bring much more equipment than during the summer because the yeah. summer uh we have to be it, it actually it requires only maybe physical uh, physical fitness etc mm -hmm. but uh there are as i said the different uh types of uh of hiking uh, and trips so uh it could be 
for rock climbing when you don't have to wear a lot of things or when you go on expeditional style of climbing then you have to bring everything which means you have to bring a tent um all of the equipment uh, all of the personal and technical uh, equipment water food uh, gas stove and everything that at that point that that was when i for example climbed Aconcagua. Um, that expeditional style uh, uh, lasted for 20 days uh, and we have to bring everything, everything that we will need uh, during during the ascent, during those days and everything. So, as I said, there are different types of uh, of trips. If you want to go hunting, we just bring uh, our backpacks, just some, some food and that's it. But if you go on for a few days, like, like ski touring, um, then we need to bring almost everything yeah and i was just going to ask you that when, when you're bringing this stuff you're not pulling it on a, on a on a sled or anything you, this is all on your back am i right yeah yeah yes wow uh, i uh we we practice actually I, I go to gym and practice and whenever i go to the um to the mountain uh even though if, uh, if i don't have to wear um my heavy rucksack i put some things in it just to practice myself just to <laughs> work on my shoulders <laughs> i love it i love it yeah because yeah, you know what i'm just thinking about this and i'm picturing you doing these ascents and uh you know in the winter time with all your gear and the backpack and and skis and and, and whatnot mm -hmm. and um you gotta be in shape and you don't just do it you don't just sit around um eating uh you know eating um i don't know what eskimo pies and 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 yeah. and just jump out and do one of these you got to train i would imagine right um mountaineering and uh life in mountain that that actually become my lifestyle that's the way i how i wanted to finish my life with uh yeah. you know and um um, as I said, it, it's it's actually my lifestyle. So if uh, during the summer I go mostly uh, to the rock climbing uh, trips, and I have to be as light as I could. So sometimes I um, don't eat for I don't know twenty four hours, uh, or th those are that fasting that uh, are maybe at this moment popular. So uh, I want to lose my weight during the winter. I I can gain maybe two kilos or something like that, but. Uh, uh, I uh, I really think of of the things what I eat. I yeah, you healthy. You know, I go sure. to the gym. Actually, I don't go to gym. I I practice at my home. I have most of these gears that that I would use in in um, gym. I have it in my home. So nice. that's that's how I combine. I uh, I'm uh, cooking um a dinner for my, for my kids and doing the training and then go to job <laughs> and then go to climbing and as i said combine all coordinated that. effort there yeah yeah hey yeah. i'm gonna go back to something we were just talking about this you mentioned the skiing um mm -hmm. it, and i was just doing a little research what how are uh because we had talked about this before touring skis how are these different from cross-country skis and of course downhill skis what's the big mm -hmm. difference there mm -hmm. um uh, Touring skis actually is a really similar to backcountry skis. Okay. Actually, I, I, I Google it. Actually, that's that's almost a European term for backcountry skis. So we uh, we we have downhill, that's Alpine Stein on a piste. Uh, backcountry skis, it's something that, that you do on off ski, uh, off piste. So which means that uh, you don't go, uh, you ski on unmarked or unpatrolled uh, area. You don't use a uh, ski. Uh, Actually, you're doing uh, uh, outdoor, out of the ski resorts. You don't use um, ski Tra trails ski or anything like any that. kind of transport. Yeah, you you just walk. But uh, in the term of equipment, um, it uh, it requires lightweighted boots, which is uh, connected to the ski only at the toe. So oh. uh, so uh, they they call it free heel. That free heel allows. Allows skier, yes, that he can uh, go uphill on flat terrain and also downhill. You just uh, switch the mode from the uphill or downhill, so you can move your heel. You can walk just just that to walk on 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 a flat terrain, uh, mm -hmm. and you climb up the hill. Uh, and also there is a 
uh, there are actually uh, the skins that you put on your skis uh, that you couldn't slide down. And when you get a new, uh, with all of those equipment, with the rucksack and everything, uh, you uh, go up to the mountain, to the top, you just switch it to the different mode and then ski down to the, from, from the top. So You know, I've learned something like, here. I had no idea that they made skis like that. I, of course, I'm not a skier. And uh, I did yeah. try it one time downhill, and I swore I'd never do it again. But I will tell you, uh -huh. uh, <laughs> that's that's an interesting uh, sounding ski that you, you can climb up. Of course, your heel is free. And that you won't slide back down when you're when you're climbing. That is so interesting. I love that. Yeah, that's and you're also always doing it on on ungroomed terrain. Uh, so um, actually, the ski touring was involved by the, those who seeking a new adventure, a new snow alpinists who wanted to, to you know to raise their adren adrenaline to the to the high level. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Well, listen, uh, before we take a break, I'm going to ask you real quickly here because there's a lot of stuff I want to cover with you. Um, tell us about the climbing and mountaineering community there in Bosnia. What's it like? Mm -hmm. Climbing like like rock climbing, you mean, or generally mountaineering? I, basically, yeah, it, just the community in general. I mean, is it a big community? Is there a lot of people that do this? Is it Actually, Bosnia and Herzegovina is a really small country. There are three and a half million of people here, but uh, we have really nice community of mountaineers and rock climbing. Mm -hmm. uh, if we say about rock climbing, there are maybe, uh, I don't know, a few uh, hundreds uh, of, of the climbers, but we all stick together, we talk, we exchange the information, we try to make a new climbing area, uh, and etc. But uh, and also, as I said, in the mountaineering community, um, there are also a really group... Uh, those are actually the different types of people, you know. We, I, I have my crew for ski touring. I have my crew for rock climbing, uh, for mountaineering, for those uh, the things when we go to the expeditions. But uh, it is small, small community, but it's really healthy and positive. Yeah, it, sounds, it sounds like the camping and, and paddling community here in the United States, and those are really nice people, and it, it's great. Uh, at least I believe it's just great to be a part of a, a community like, and it's a small community here too, but. People are really genuine and they're nice. And it sounds like that's the way it is over there as well, right? Yeah. Uh, I think that people, when they go to the mountain, uh, because of that hormone serotonin, uh, I think they become happy when they achieve uh, achieve the top. Uh, that, that's actually a combination of mental and physical uh, achievement yeah. because you, you have to push your efforts to, to climb to the mountain, but the sense of achievement that you uh, manage to do something, I think the combination of that, I have actually one uh, sentence I can quote you uh, that was, that's really familiar here in uh, in, in Europe, because uh, it's written by the Slovenian mountaineer who died on Manaslu, and he said, I, I will quote it, yeah. uh, he who seeks a goal will, will remain empty when he reaches it, and he who will find a way will always carry that goal with himself. Wow. So it means if you are looking or seeking for the goal, um, you won't be happy when you reach it, but if you enjoy the whole way on your uh, the journey. As we say, oh, journey, yes, that's yeah, that, that was uh, written by Nate Zaplotnik, that Slovenian mountain who, who died on Manaslo. But we use that sentence. Oh, what a great <laughs> saying, right? That's an awesome yeah. saying, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, well, listen, when we come back, we're going to talk to you, we're going to ask you about the process thereof and and um, how you manage during the trip and we'll we'll talk about that when we come okay, back. So, okay. yep. yep. Well we'll be back with more right back with more of outdoors people right after these messages. A few years ago someone asked Rutabaga's owner, Darren Bush, Hey, how long have you guys been selling boats? Darren replied, well, we don't sell boats. We sell time on the water. Of course that comes in all types. We help people paddle more safely with Rutabaga Outdoor programs. We rent canoes, kayaks, and stand-up paddleboards. We sell and install racks to get you from home to adventure. Rutabaga's got everything you need to get you out on the water, like paddles, life jackets, dry bags, and clothing. Rutabaga Paddle Sports, on the web at rutabaga.com. Mention you saw this ad on The Camping Show. It is time to go camping. Introducing Campground View's Virtual Tours. 
you can tour the campground, see the sites, see if they are available, and click to book your perfect spot. Hit the open road and explore the amazing places found in nature. We make it easy to discover, find, and book your site so that you can go have the fun and freedom you seek. Campground View's virtual tours make it easy and simple for you to see where you are going. Duluth Pack is handcrafted for every lifestyle, making memories since 1882. In store at 365 Canal Park Drive or online at DuluthPack.com. We're one big family, a community of paddlers, and we want to make sure that everyone has a great time out on the water. We are made right here in Sparta, Tennessee, USA. This is where every Jackson kayak is born. Built by hand with a focus on innovation. We are Jackson Kayak. We are. We are. We are Jackson Kayak. We are. We are. We're Jackson Kayak. We are. We are Jackson Kayak. And we're back here with Ada Starchevich on Outdoors People. Ada, when you're climbing mountains, where do you sleep? And I'm sure, <laughs> I know it's in a tent, at least I'm sure. But um, how do you prepare meals? I mean, it's super windy uh, when you're climbing a mountain, I'm sure. How does that work? And it's not quite flat when you're pitching a tent, I'm sure. Or is it? Well, sometimes, uh, actually, we, we sleep in a tent. Sometimes we sleep in a mountain hut. So it depends on what kind of uh, trek we, we do. If, if it's... Uh, ski touring sometimes we sleep in a tent or in a, in a, a mountain hut or if we go to to that expeditional way it's always uh, in a tent but uh i also had some uh twice i i had that uh opportunity to sleep in a, on a rock during during uh, our ascent to, to the top because we couldn't manage to finish it in a whole day we just stick to the anchor and to that boat and we slept on the rock actually we didn't sleep we were just uh hanging <laughs> there but uh, yeah. at, at yeah. least we survived right. but uh, during uh, during the um, climbing the mountains uh, if when we sleep uh, in in the tent actually we, as i said we have to bring all of the equipment with us uh, on our backs uh, so um when we for example go ski touring we go up to the mountain to, to that uh, mountain uh to top and then uh, slide it down uh, and then go uh, to for example mountain hut and then uh, we we cook if we don't have water we cook the snow we, oh. which, yeah we do yeah. it on Agugagua also actually during the pray on, on praying Tversnica, those are the waste expenses uh, uh, of of the big mountains here in Bosnia it is uh, they, they are not so high around 2000 meters but um they they can let you to 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 feel that uh mountain spirit and we cook as i said we cook uh, the things that we have don't eat much because you you have to continue your adventure tomorrow. Um, and that, that's it mostly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, real quick before I, I got another question I'm going to ask you about this, but um, the discussion has been raised um, that somehow snow melted snow tastes taste has a taste to it um, other than just what regular water would have. Any truth to that? Um, it is different than the regular water. It is, it is. like okay. when you drink uh, water, you can feel that there is some mineral. There are some minerals in it, and I don't know the the the, uh, mm -hmm. the combination uh, that's in, in the regular water. But when you drink uh, snow, it's something just without flavor. It's it is something different. That, okay. uh, yeah, it, it sure. is actually different. Is. <laughs> you can you can do it, but uh, I uh, I put some vitamins in it so we can change it change the color oh. maybe become sweet with sugar and that, that's interesting yeah 
So what is your, what's been your longest trek? I mean, how many days to the top of a mountain? And, and then what was that altitude? Uh, actually, that, that was uh, the reason I got the, the, the prize. Yeah, uh, and uh, that mountaineering association uh, gave me that. Gave me that. Uh, that was Aconcagua, of course. Oh, it was uh, that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was Aconcagua. Uh, it was the trek uh, in one way. It is around um, fifty kilometers. It's around thirty miles. So oh, in wow. one way to the top, and from the top to, to the base again, it's. Uh, Another yeah, another thirty miles. So it's so around 60, 30, sixty miles. Wow! Uh, in twenty days. Wow! In twenty days you did that. Yeah, yeah, that's but a, but there is uh, that's an expeditional style because I mentioned that there are different styles of climbing. Uh, so it means that we start from the base. We need to go. Um, we need to go higher. We get to the. Uh, but we, we have two acclimatization camps, so we need to acclimat, acclimat, acclimate uh, ourselves. It, ourselves. It means that uh, we have to uh, adjust our uh, body to the lack of uh, oxygen. oxygen yeah, as, right. we get, as we get higher, uh, the, the air is thinner and it's uh, much harder to breathe uh, all of the... Uh, things that we do, it's uh, much more challenging and complicating than when we do it uh, at the base. Yeah. So we sleep in a two acclimatization. We actually, we slept. If I'm talking about Aconcagua, we slept uh, in the two acclimatization camp. Then we get to the base camp. That's uh, that's the beginning, the starting point of every ex expedition. And there we have organized uh, food, water, and everything. Uh, we spend there. Um, I don't know, maybe two or three days, and then we go uh, to the first and second uh, high altitude camps. That's maybe most dangerous part of the expedition. Uh, we slept one night at one camp one, then in camp two, and then we go to that ascent to the summit and get down. So um, that's the actual way of how we do those high mountains yeah, yeah yeah well listen we're going to take a quick break again and when we come back ada we are going to look at some photos that you sent us and some video we're going to look at some video as well so mm -hmm. don't, okay. don't go away we'll be right back with her right after these messages okay. a few years ago someone asked rutabaga's owner darren bush hey how long have you guys been selling boats Darren replied, well, we don't sell boats. We sell time on the water. Of course, that comes in all types. We help people paddle more safely with Rutabaga Outdoor programs. We rent canoes, kayaks, and stand-up paddle boards. We sell and install racks to get you from home to adventure. Rutabaga's got everything you need to get you out on the water, like paddles, life jackets, dry bags, and clothing. Rutabaga Paddle Sports, on the web at rutabaga.com. Mention you saw this ad on the camping show. It is time to go camping. Introducing Campground View's virtual tours. You can tour the campground, see the sites, see if they are available, and click to book your perfect spot. Hit the open road and explore the amazing places found in nature. We make it easy to discover, find, and book your site so that you can go have the fun and freedom you seek. Campground View's virtual tours make it easy and simple for you to see where you are going. Duluth Pack is handcrafted for every lifestyle, making memories since 1882. In store at 365 Canal Park Drive or online at DuluthPack.com. We are one big family, a community of paddlers, and we want to make sure that everyone has a great time out on the water. We are made right here in Sparta, Tennessee, USA. This is where every Jackson kayak is born. Built by hand with a focus on innovation. We are Jackson Kayak. We are. We are. We are Jackson Kayak. We are. We are. We're Jackson Kayak. We are. We are. We are Jackson Kayak. We 
And we're back with our guest, Ada Starchevich here on Outdoors People. All right, let's, uh, we've got some videos lined up or queued up, as it were. Let's take a look at those first, and then we'll take a look at some photos. Those are some cool skis, I have to say. <laughs> That's <laughs> great. Okay, now we got some photos, and you can tell us what we're looking at here for each of these photos, Ada. Okay, I just want. Okay, yeah, that's the climbing area in Dreznica. That's Herzegovina, one of the popular routes. That's the rock climbing, of course. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's the climbing area here in Bugojno. That's my local area. Uh, and that was the shooting with video <laughs> video <You> know, t-shirt. <laughs> I recognize that shirt. Yeah, I was like, hey. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that, those, those were the pictures for you. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. That's also Dresden. So yeah, you can see you can see that the combination of those be that beautiful uh, that beautiful nature. Uh, yeah. There's the river Neretva passing uh, by. Um, and that that's the area of for for climbing and which is really connected to the civilization but still it's in the nature it is not uh, it, yeah. it could be something crowd sometimes crowded but it's not your tiny little speck on there and i could see you but yeah, you're, yeah. 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 That, and, that, this killed me what is this we're looking at i love this by the way <laughs> Yeah, that that's the way when you know all of the techniques uh, when you climb the yeah. rock that that's the easiest to move that that's not something that it's scary when my, <laughs> my, when my mom saw it she was screaming for 10 days but i couldn't i love it i love describe it describe it oh. that, that it is not actually scary at all but she couldn't believe me of course of course well she's your mother if she's gonna you know naturally go away yeah. do you do it yeah i love it though. <laughs> that's a great photo by the way yeah thank you this yeah, is cool that's the ice climbing. Uh, that that um, year here in Bosnia, it was uh, uh, around minus uh, 30 degrees. Uh, I'm not sure how many Fahrenheit, but I think uh, something maybe, I don't know how, I don't want to guess. And it was, everything was frozen. So we each, um, uh, Every water that we can find in the nature was frozen, so we could do the ice climbing. But we we done it that year, and that's it. We we haven't done it since then. We we need to go somewhere else. <laughs> well, Ed, I can tell you, at uh, negative twenty nine Celsius is negative uh -huh. twenty Fahrenheit. So that's uh -huh. uh, okay, damn yeah. cold. Yeah, that's, that, very... that's cool. But that yeah. was only one year. I'm not sure. Maybe seven years ago, yeah. something like that. Yeah. 
There you that's go. The top, that's the top of Aconcagua. Uh, I didn't uh, mention that the top of Aconcagua is 6,962 meters <sighs> or 22,850 feet. Yes, I <laughs> converted. <laughs> hey, I yes. think that makes you the queen of mountaineering. Is that safe to say? Yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> say. I wouldn't say there are so many mountains in the world. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I I could do a climb, but okay, who knows? Well, we're going to give you that title on this show. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that's the... That's one small uh, climbing area. We were bolting it. That that means that we put those uh, bolts in it that we can climb. Yeah. It's in Preo, that's Glam, which also Bosnia, also Bosnia. I mean, Bosnia and Herzegovina is one country, but uh, geographically it's divided on Bosnia and Herzegovina. So uh, Herzegovina is much more warmer, but Bosnia is... Uh, uh, it's not so warm. If you want to ski, you go to Bosnia. If you want to climb, you go to Herzegovina. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Wow. Nice. And that's the other Mondra. That's the best climber in the world. And that's really? my little boy. Yeah, yeah. And he that's your that's your son right there? That's my son. Yes. Oh, when he was great. when he was a little, now he's a big boy. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we we wanted to to see other Mondra. As I said, he's the best climber. And that's the moment we, we met him. He was really nice person, and he, as I, as we mentioned, uh, look those uh, climbing areas in Bosnia. He visited uh, Canyon Ties, no? Um, that's uh, National Geographic also made a picture of it. So it oh. means that there is uh, there are two cliffs, uh, and uh, and you they, they put the high line on it, and uh, the people climb there, and you can see the river and the main road there, and it it's really magnificent. View. You. and yeah. Adamantra came there and he uh, bolted the first 9A plus um, route and he of course climbed it the day after that and I don't think that had and, ever, and that and anyone had <laughs> again. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, he's a Czech, he's a Czech climber from yeah. Czechoslovakia. Yeah. Now this and is scary. This yeah, looks, what did your mother say about a picture like this? Uh, I, I'm not there. I, I don't do that. That's the <laughs> a National Geographic picture oh, I, I, I was okay. telling you about. That's, uh, yeah. that's the main road uh, and the river Verbas, and there are two cliffs, and it's, they, they combine. I think that's the longest. Uh, I, I couldn't say that's the longest in the whole world, that high line, but it is really one of the longest in the world. I'm not sure, maybe 500 meters or something like okay. that. Uh, and that's the famous picture that National Geographic uh, do for for the I don't know one one magazine. Yeah. 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 Well, let me ask you. You know, because to me that looks scary. What What is the scariest thing uh, that you've experienced while on a mountaineering adventure? Mm, there were many many things which were. It's I could worst. say funny, but not so scary. I, I wouldn't say that it's so scary, but, but I have a little story. <clears throat> when I was uh, climbing with my partner here in our local area, like uh, area, it, it, climbing area, it is really close uh, to, to the town. It's only, uh, I think, uh, five miles fr from the town and from the first village, which is really populated. Uh, two and a half miles. We were climbing there. When we climbed, we are tied with, with a rope. Um, and uh, I was belaying him. As, as we were alone, it, we were really quiet. At mm -hmm. one moment, my partner told me, put me down. There's a bear de down there. <laughs> I thought I couldn't understand him correctly. Or he, he repeated once again, I lower him down. And I didn't know what's happening. We turned around. And on the path, we saw two small bear cups <laughs> on our path. But we were climbing in the, um, there are some different sectors on so that area, we were climbing in a cave. So on the on the path in front of us, there were two uh, bear cups and uh, beside us, there was a big rock, so we couldn't move anywhere. But yeah. we, we weren't, of course, afraid of those uh, those little bears. But we know that the mother is somewhere. Mother is about. nearby. You bet. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and that that was the most uh, danger that we were afraid of. Yeah. And at, at one moment, I was uh, 
standing there and I was thinking, oh my God, is, is, this, the, is this the end? Am I going <laughs> to die like this? <laughs> we know we have to do something. So we, yeah. we took uh, some, uh, some stones and we were throwing, but not hitting. We were just throwing it uh, nicely and politely. Uh -huh. <laughs> to uh -huh. But those cups were, were just hopping and coming towards us. They, they were looking around. There was such an incident. They probably thought you wanted to just play catch with them with those yeah. rocks or something. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to, to play with us right. and we were throwing those stones and they just moved a bit from that pad. We ran from that cave to, to the car breathlessly. We, we, we <laughs> done, I think in a few seconds, we, we, we didn't see the, the mother. You never did. And uh, we have actually um, a record that uh, a couple of times bear come to that uh, climbing area, but has never, we have never um, have any, any, um, uh, Real danger case that that yeah. animal attacked uh, people they just move they, they are really hospitable so if people want to come to bosnia to to our climbing area they should know that we have really hospitable wild animals <laughs> you have you have nice polite bears there i like that yes yes i like yes. that okay oh, yeah that was yes. the scariest moment in my climbing career <laughs> Well, that's not too bad. As long as it turned out well, that's, I mean, you know, that's all good, right? Yeah. Well, Lita, where can people go to follow you on social media? Mm -hmm. Well, um, as I said, uh, I want to actually first promote my beautiful country because we are a small yeah. country. We have a lot of na untouched nature. We have a lot of uh, mountain uh, hikes and climbing and, and, just just to, to, to see those maybe uh, towns. But uh, if people so follow me on social media, they can see some interesting stories from the mountains. They can see some different techniques of uh, doing some climb in the mountains. But uh, maybe maybe learn some tricks, uh, trips uh, from, uh, from those, I don't know, yeah. uh, trips. Uh, or at least can see the beauty of my country <laughs> yeah and it is a beautiful country for a fact yeah a fact. yes of well course. ada i'll tell you what we and I, and I have to thank you publicly here uh thanks for being patient with me um we i think we've talked for we talked started talking about a year ago about having mm -hmm. you on yes, the show yes. and and you were very patient with me and us and uh, i want to thank you for your patience and we finally got you on the show and i'm so glad we did because uh, i'm really glad that i could manage to 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 be a part of your show yes. and i'm actually as i said at the beginning i'm really uh pleased that that you you realize that I could be a good guest at your show. Oh, of course. As I, said. I want I want to to show my country because we are really small, and I want to to, to show my lifestyle, my um, you know <laughs> the way I spend my time and live. Absolutely, so, thank absolutely. You, thank you. Yeah, you have a beautiful country, and you are a wonderful lady. And um, I, and I have to tell you what you bring with you, as we saw in the promos today, you bring with you a huge fan club. So that was, <laughs> it's very uh -huh. impressive. Very impressive. <laughs> we appreciate that. Well, Lita, listen, thank you for being our guest on the Outdoors People Show. It was a pleasure having you here with us this evening. Thank you. Thank you, too. And uh, I would just uh, tell people, come to Bosnia, visit us. Uh, you won't regret it. Wh whoever come to Bosnia, he returned it again. <laughs> yeah, I, I would agree with that. I would certainly agree with that. Yeah. Oh, we'd thank also you. like to thank each of our sponsors for bringing you tonight's show. Rutabaga Paddle Sports, Campground Views, Duluth Pack, and Jackson Kayak. Be sure to tune in for next week's episode, California skateboarder and world traveler, Valerie LaForge, with our guest, Valerie LaForge. This is CW Get saying, have a great evening, and thanks for tuning in to Outdoors People. See you next week.